Yeah. I mean, I think we touched a bit about methanes before, mm. so I'll probably hone in there a bit more. I mean, methane's main um, consequence when you have excess amounts of methane being produced is, is a slowing of the gut transit time. Okay. So that can manifest in constipation where you're not pooing every single day or your poos are really hard and rock like and really hard to get out. Yeah. Um, but I think on top of that, which, you know, can result in hemorrhoids and, you know, anal fissures and, um, you know, if you have a backup of gas, like bloating and distension occurring because things just aren't, you're not pooing, therefore the gas can't get out either. So you're just blowing up like a balloon um, because of all the gas is building up behind that, that sort of poo backlog. Mm. But on top of that, you're also getting absorption of, you know, um, uh, bacterial toxins and other compounds from that, that bowel. And naturopaths in the past used to call it bowel toxemia. And I think it's a really apt term, even with, with modern research showing, yeah, it's actually true. That's what's going on, is when your bowels aren't moving, you're actually absorbing a whole range of different compounds like bacterial endotoxins in much greater amounts, and hence why there's a link between, you know, um, constipation is a risk factor for Parkinson's disease development because it's essentially it's bacterial toxins that are causing the, the Parkinson's, but it's the absorption through the slow bowel that's the trigger. Yeah, so it's, it's you know, that's more of the extreme end of things. But um, again, you're getting essentially absorption of those sort of bacterial toxins, endotoxins, I'd say environmental toxins, you're getting a second go at um, that's in that situation from high methane. So you, you will get other, you know, body-wide symptoms like brain fog and fatigue and depression uh, alongside, you know, um, are you also slower metabolism to are, are common sort of consequences of that high methane um, scenario. Um, hydrogen gas is interesting because it is much more arguably a bigger bulkier gas than methane. So you, you might get much more acute bloating and distension from, from that. Um, interesting enough, methane is mostly because it's, it's, it's more condensed dense gas, it, it slows down the gut and that's why it causes bloating and distension where it's hydrogen is just big and bulky. So you tend to get this very clear, quick reaction of you know bloating and distension within like 15, 20, 30, 60 minutes of eating, oh, your new tummy goes out. That's very classic hydrogen. Um, hydrogen sulfide, you know, so there's some, some debate about what you know classic symptoms are. For me, it's it's you know very sul sulfury burps um, and very sulfury flatus um, would be pretty classic um, symptoms of that and worsening of, of symptoms after sulfur rich foods or after after meat as well because meat is high in, in sulfur containing amino acids or worse after fatty foods too because of the the outflow of, of bile bile um, the higher fat intake we have particularly saturated fat we get more bile being produced and there's more sulfur in that bile which then produces more hydrogen sulfide gas as well. So there might be correlation between, oh, I eat more protein or I eat more fat, I get worse symptoms and worse, you know, stinky, stinky, sulfury sort of flatus. You know, that might be pretty classic. And that way, bowel pattern, I argue, will go either way. I mean, I think some people mm. would suggest that hydrogen sulfide is, is diarrhea. I don't see that all the time in my patients, although it's probably more common than constipation, but I do have patients who have slow transit time and have um, high um, hydrogen sulfide gas as well. But um, I'd say they more commonly associated with you know, more normal sort of transit time when you have hydrogen sulfide gas being being produced. 